Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. Time to take you around the world of sport. Well, today is D-Day. Nigerians are waiting to see who will win between Australia and the country called Nigeria. A big one there because Papa Falcons just have to do it. They just have to win this game. All Nigerians are supporting them from this side and also hoping that those who are in the diaspora will be giving them those necessary support that they need. Well, by 11 o'clock, Super Falcons will file out against the Matildas of Australia. We'll be looking at that particular topic uh, right now. But right now, let's talk, quickly look at the result of games being played so far uh, in this certain uh, just yesterday and today. Well, Canada did well, defeating the Republic of uh, Ireland 2 1. And you also have Japan uh, actually doing well, defeating uh, Costa Rica 2 0. And you have uh, uh, Spain. Uh, walloping Zambia 5 nil. USA play one of draw against Netherlands. A tough one there for USA, but for Japan and Spain, they've actually made their way to qualify. Well, good one. And the likes of Zambia and Ireland have been bundled out of this tournament so far. Are the two countries, Zambia and Ireland, right now becoming those two nations that have been bundled out earlier in the tournament. Well, for Zambia, it's an eye opener. The ladies tried their best, but it wasn't good enough. They lost out 5 nil. The first match also they also lost out in that encounter with a wide margin of goals but right now well spain are really uh, smiling that the fact that they've been able to do it against uh, zambia japan also uh, qualifying there well just to give you update concerning the games that have been played so far at the world cup well just yesterday and earlier today well we'll be looking at the big one that has to do with nigeria versus australia super falcons will be ready uh, to fight against Australia. The ladies have been talking tough, even their coach also, he has been talking that they will be uh, very careful against Australia. Well, they are the host nation sharing it with uh, New Zealand and a lot of support coming from their home fans there. But as it is, can Super Falcons do it? They held their own against Canada. It was a tough one, but this particular one is tougher because Canada already defeated, uh, they already defeated Ireland and that will spur them to action. Talking about the two teams right now, both of them looking for how to better their lot. Australia won their first match against Ireland, 1-0, and we drew against Canada. A tough one there it is. Now we'll be focusing on Nigeria versus Australia. Uh, that's the preview we're looking at. And right now we have that. But yes, uh, let's look at the air to head first before we actually unveil our guests in the studio. Well, in 2015, Australia beats Nigeria 2 0 at Winnipeg Stadium in Canada. Uh, well, that match actually took place in Canada and it was a tough one for Nigeria. We lost by two goals to nil. And still talking about the Australia and Nigeria, let's look at the team fat. Uh, Australia team fat, we have overall record. Well, they played 27 times. They won eight, uh, draw six. They lost 13. Goals for 39 goals that they scored so far. Goal against them, 50. Goal difference, 11. And if you look at it that way, biggest win for Australia was 4-1 against Ghana in 2007. Australia against Jamaica in 2019. The biggest defeat was against Denmark in 1995 where they were developed 5 nil by Denmark their highest scoring side six goals and you look at it just to let you have a feel of their performance so far well at the FIFA Women World Cup streaks they have a successful win of two in 2011 and 2019 uh, in 1995 and 1999 2003 successive draws 2007 clean sheet 15 2015 2015 and 2023 is the present one then you look at uh, successive matches without a win for them nine between 1995 2003 just to give you update concerning australia but let's look at our own nigeria super falcons let's focus on nigeria now we've played 27 times because after all we've been at the every world cup we won four we drew four we lost 19 goals four we scored 20 and goal against is considered 63 goals at the world cup goal difference of 40 minus 43 there biggest win for nigeria was 2-0 against denmark in 1999 we defeated them 2-0 against korea republic 2-0 so in 2019, biggest defeat was uh, uh, against, uh, well, uh, that match against Norway there. We lost by 8-0 in 1995. Highest scoring match, it goes, well, a big one against us uh, from Norway in 1995. USA also defeated us in 1999, 7-1. 
Most goals scored in a match, three. Nigeria playing 3-3 against Canada in 1995. Brazil defeated us 4-3 uh, in 1999. And then Sweden also did well. Well, from so far in this competition at the World Cup, let's look at Nigeria uh, streaks now. Successive wins, we've only won one, well, in four times, four defeat uh, draws. Successive uh, draw now, we have one four times, the last of which was 2023. And then you have uh, without the defeat, matches that we have played without uh, no defeat now uh, two matches in 2011 2015 and you have matches without a win successive matches without a win nine between 1999 and 2011 just to give you updates concerning nigerian record at the world cup successive matches without scoring we've played four matches like that in 1991 to 1995 and 2007 to 2011 Successive clean sheets, won four times, the last of which was 2023 20, present. Just to give you updates concerning Nigerian team, both uh, Nigeria and also Australia, giving you facts there. Well, for head-to-head, -head, we've met once and they defeated us in 2015, 2-0 in that encounter there. Well, that's why today we'll be having uh, uh, two men in the studio, uh, at least uh, men of uh, Timba and Calibre, as they say, uh, will be uh, actually talking with us concerning Super Falcons. Uh, ahead of uh, this particular match that will be coming by 11 a.m. Uh, against Australia over there in Brisbane. I have with me a man that has seen it all to some extent. He has really done well for Nigeria when it comes to coaching, especially women football. He has been with the under uh, 17 women team, the one they call the Flamingos, the national team coach, the head coach of under 17 women's team. That is uh, Coach uh, Bankale Oluokiri. Good to have you, Coach. Good morning. God mm. bless you. Yes, and uh, at least uh, your team also is the coach of uh, Nigeria Tales. And I love the fact that you are actually launching your team. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria Tales of Abuja. That's the female team that he also coaches. And then to the uh, far left is uh, coach uh, Rafael Ahamba, who is also the coach of uh, uh, Reunited. <laughs> if I get it right. Refine Nuggets. Uh, uh, Refine Nugget mm. FC, FC in Abuja. Good to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. Yes, let's run through this together nigeria will be facing australia let's start with that before we talk about nigeria tell us briefly but super far comes you'll be facing australia in, in the next it's not even up to an hour anymore yes in australia we just read there all the facts and all that about them so far it's a tough one between nigeria and australia knowing fully well that canada won their match yesterday yes. and that has actually pushed us uh to that uh, edge cool. where we need to win this game if we want to see them in this tournament. Koshi, let's start with you. With your experience as a national coach, what are you going to say about this? Um, there, there is one fact that remains when in a tournament like this because uh, just as Riley said, uh, I've, I've seen the I've seen on fire in my own time too as well. What will be going through your mind now if I be the coach? Uh, I mean, uh, given the responsibility to, to coach the team, is how can I make the whole minions of Nigeria smile? And it has to do with your strategy, communication with your co uh, coaches, I mean, the tanker crew, and then uh, sacking the players and making sure that every point is being noted and then uh, being dotted. Mm. And again, to, you know, what really requires now is high level of concentration. Not only the players alone, but everybody that are around the players need to have that level of concentration. Mm. And then we instill determination into the players because that's only what they need. Making them know that they can do. No overconfidence, don't underrate opponents, and then just play the game normal. Go to the field, enjoy yourself, mm. and I know fully well that you have a career that you need to protect because if you go beyond this place to the next stage, the market value of the players will rise, even the coaches himself. Mm. I'm here here today because of what I've achieved at the World Cup. So if the man achieve more than this one, then he's be sure of a better job somewhere else. So these are things that we need to play inside the locker room. Mm. And before, even before the locker room, even since yesterday, even a, from anything, from the day they drew the first match against Canada, so it's supposed to be the, the focus. Because uh, I remember when I was at the World Cup, we told ourselves, we don't want to go back home now. <laughs> you want to still be there. 
So that's just that. They need to be determined and uh, remain focused. Okay, coming from Coach Bank, there, talking about this particular game that will be up uh, in a couple of minutes now. Well, we're looking at Australia versus Nigeria. The Super Falcons are fired up. They want to fight this particular fight and win. Well, Coach Bank always says the coach will instill determination into those players. Tell them, even after that match against Canada, till now that they want to start, go out there and do it. We don't want to go back home yet. Coming from Coach uh, Bankole. Now, uh, Coach Ahamba, at, at this game, uh, we have uh, uh, so much expectations. Nigeria are looking at, oh, who will start, who will not start, who will be there. Maybe we should just look at that side first. Although we have probability, uh, uh, different... Uh, 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 news coming in that maybe uh, because Alisa Oshara got some knocks, maybe she won't be starting or she will start or not. Well, we don't know. Depends on what the coach wants. But right now, our squad, Halima Twayide is back. Uh, Ajibade is back. The two of them. So we are having, this is just a probable, a possible, a, a possible lineup for Nigeria. Just possible lineup. Uh, Chamaka Nadozi, our fantastic goalkeeper is there. Ashley Plumter. Uh, Oluwa Twins is Dimehi, Osina Shiohale, Mitchell Alozi, Halima Twayede in the midfield there with Christy Uchebe, Rashida Ajibade joining at the front there, Tony Payne, Ifeoma Onumenu, and then Oshuala, just in case, or maybe it's or whoever's going to be there. But right now, looking at the midfield now, Abiodun is not there, she's out because of the red card. Are you okay with this? Assuming we are using this. Yeah, I'm very okay with the formation of the coach and thank God that Ajibadi Rashida, she's back to the team. It's actually strengthen the attack because uh, if you look at our match against Canada, they were, we actually played well, we controlled the game, we tried to, we tried to, you know, we, we tried to outplay the, and out, or run the, our opponents, Canada. but we are lacking some attacking bites and instincts, but with our presence i believe we are going to excel and i see us winning this game three one three oh you're already talking about the score line because yeah, i'm very because cool, <laughs> if you look at the girl i've been following them mm. their page and all of that those guys are in high spirit and they are full of confidence i'm believing they will they, as they, they are excel. in high spirit so is australia one they have the backup of the fans they are the host coach bankoli okay it's like you want to say something i want you to understand one thing football mm. is really changing who believes that Coach Bankole is going to get to the stage he got to at the last World Cup? I was here. We were talking about it. I said he is going to even get to the final. But sometimes football, it doesn't go the way as planned. planned. But have it in mind that Nigeria, when it comes to women football, they are the only team that always stand out in all African countries. So far, so good. Some African countries have not been doing well. But I believe that Nigerian spirit, and with these fresh young players, and with the experienced players we have, I see them excelling. Australia won't be a problem to us. Being, so sure. Even though they are co-hosts, mm -hmm. I don't see them giving us a tough time. Well, according to uh, Hamba Raphael there, he's not seeing them giving us a tough time. But uh, uh, let's hear from uh, Coach Bankole. Now, just like he has said, he believes that Nigeria can win this game. We are just looking at that probable li lineup. Maybe uh, these are the uh, set of players that will play. But really, from your own as a coach, as a national coach, uh, if you have to select your squad now, looking at what we play against Canada, what would it look like? Um, basically, I will tell you, talking about uh, the situation of the game itself, every, I mean, the two teams are, they are, they are under one kind of a pressure or the other. Mm -hmm. But it depends how they can calm down the nerves. Uh, the Australians will be there so that they won't disappoint the millions of their citizens that have come out to watch them or gloomy on the television to watch them. So also the Nigerian national team too. Uh, we know we love football in Nigeria. Nobody wants to hear any other thing except for winning. We want to remain at the World Cup. Many media people are there. Many individuals have they've scheduled the holiday. They want to enjoy football. Once Nigeria goes out, even to say we have some kind of entertaining football. People still want to see us. We have some flashy, I mean kind of jerseys and everything. We have some 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 swag that we do bring down to work on. I love that word, that swag. <laughs> yes. That, that is true. Seriously, even even FIFA. FIFA uh, feels Nigeria when it comes to the World Cup. Yeah. Now, going to what I just asked about uh, these ladies, uh, if you are now you are wardrum, although you are the coach of under 17. So we are talking about the Super Falcons. Now, if you are the coach, what changes will you put in today? Uh, the, the, the major thing which we, we lacked the last match uh, is Ajibadi's presence. 
Because you know he's kind of attacking man, kind of a player. He has a force, he has the energy, he has what it takes to run down opponent. Even if she's not even scoring, she can create some some kind of hard support. Up. Yes. Mm. So and uh, give a finish pass to uh, whoever is in better position to score. So our uh, inclusion in the team will be much, much more. I mean, big, big, big difference and can give us that uh, result. For me. For me, which is normal me, I don't predict scores. Mm. But if I tell you, if you get draw out of this match, it is going to be more favorable to us. If you get a draw yes. from this match, yes, mm. it's better than losing. It's Great better than match. losing. Either you can win, you draw, you lose. Draw will be much, much more better for us, so that we don't just overemphasize. I mean, maybe don't play our opponent because they have what it takes too as well. But looking at player to player. Looking at uh, the kind of games we played in ten past, our record, I think if we win, fantastic. But we should not lose the match if we still want to remain in the tournament. So that's what I think the coaches will be working towards. Instead of losing, let's get a draw so that the next match, the the, the whipping uh, our team. That's that, Ireland. Yes. So I believe with that, we should be able to get something more better. Mm. Well, we've been talking with uh, two coaches here, uh, one with the national coach, another one with uh, uh, United, uh, <laughs> reunited fusion, right? Good one there. Mm -hmm. uh, from the way it is, a big one is coming. Australia versus Nigeria, 11 o'clock, and that's a big match that everyone has been talking about. And now we quickly, let's look at the table of our group, uh, even though Canada, they defeated uh, they defeated uh, Ireland in that match, uh, in that game they played yesterday. Right now, Canada are topping with four points after playing two matches. They won one, they drew one, uh, that's against us. Australia, they won against Ireland also. And now, Nigeria drew against Canada. We have one point. Australia, they have three points. Canada with four points. Ireland, yes, just like Coach Bangholi said, they are the whipping child of this group. They are yet to actually uh, score or rather win any game and already automatically they are out of the competition for losing two games uh, on a straight. But right now, from this, with the way it is, uh, Coach Bangholi, 4 3 1 0. That's the point yes. of this group. Like you said, we need to at worst draw this game. Don't lose. Yes. But if we win, fantastic. Yes. Now, if we win, I'm going to have four. Yes. Then it means we're going to join Canada uh, uh, talking about the second match in the group. Yes. If we draw, we have two. That's very technical now. Yes. That's mathematics coming in now, and we don't want mathematics now. Okay. It's all win for us because I don't see us drawing this game. You don't see? I don't see Nigeria draw. A draw. Yeah. Okay, so I have uh, two uh, different opinions now. One says we're going to win, one says we're going to draw uh, this game. A big one there between Nigeria and uh, Australia, the host nation, even though they have the support, but we look at this particular topic. Now, their coach, rather, their team, they have, they are missing some key players due to injury or thereabout. And now, Coach Wardrum is already uh, saying we should be very cautious. They will not, they will not uh, underrate the Australian team. Let's look at our topic together. Uh, Wardrum actually right now calling for that, call for caution despite Australia's missing key players. Uh, the coach knows why he's saying this. Uh, the player, that super far should not be complained. Oh, they don't have this particular player, that particular player in Australian team. They, they are biggest uh, players. But that's, that doesn't mean they are <laughs> still not going to come out to play against us very well. Yeah, uh, I remember uh, my time at uh, under 17 World Cup in India. I remember when we wanted to play, you know, in this kind of a team, this, at this particular time, Everything works. It's the all technicals. Uh, when we went for uh, our pre-match meeting, I noticed some key players are not on ground for the US. And uh, I tried to make some inquiry just to survey. And I got to know that they, they have a they fail COVID test. Hmm. So I begin to plot. How do I do? What do I bring out? How do I surpass these Americans? Because Looking at them at that tournament, they are one of the toughest teams. In fact, they are the most favorite. So, like what the coach has just really said, you should go away from complacency. You should just be determined. The African mentality, this is what me as an African man, as a typical Nigerian, this is what I told my player at the World Cup. Let us be typical Nigerian team 
so that we want to take something back home. We want to fight with all the blood in our body mm. so that we'll be able to get something back and still remain relevant at the tournament. I tell you, that's why I said, draw will be much more better for us. Although we're not going to, I mean, I mean, they play the Australian, island, yes. the island. Mm. So it's not that we'll be thinking why we might watch them, but when the opportunity comes, but let's not just talk about those one now. Let's face Australia. Yeah, Australia. With a draw, can give us that hope. That, but if you lose, we are out of the tournament already. Then if you win, it's another big issue. The group becomes open. Because if you win, we have four points. Then Canada, the Canada if points. they go and win uh, the... Australia. Uh, that means Australia go and win the uh, Canadians. Then they have uh, uh, that is, uh, they points. six points. They have six <laughs> a points. Big one. So a big one. So it, it, Nigeria can make the group the way it should, the, the, from my own perspective. So I, I think the best thing for us, just talk about win Nigeria, is for we not to lose that match. At have, worst, at draw it. Worst draw because that's the way. Mm. So it's way World Cup stage. You can't just. It's very difficult. I said for the way we prepare, maybe in Africa, it will just be difficult for you to say Nigeria will go and white watch uh, the Australia in their home ground, except something horrible happens mm. at this time around. It's looking at the opportunity, a draw we even take them to the next stage itself. Win and draw two, we take them to the next stage so you can still compete with each other. But if they go and lose cards, they lost like that, then I don't know what's even going to happen to the tournament itself. Well, we've been talking concerning Nigeria versus uh, Australia. Spotify accounts are fired up in this game. They want to make sure they win at worst, get a draw. But really, Nigerians are actually hoping for a win for them because if they win this game, it will propel them at least among the top team there. Well, right now we have Coach Bankole in the studio. That's National Coach, the head coach of Under Seven. Montina also doubled as coach of Nigeria Ratels. That reminds me, let's talk about Ratel briefly. Nigeria Ratels is a Abuja based team. That's your team. Yes. Uh, the one you coach in the Nigerian Women Football League. So far, so good. What's about your team now? Yeah, the team is doing well. Uh, this is our, I mean, going to our third year in, in the league. I remember our story. We came in from amateur to championship. Within time, we got to the premiership. And then within the same year, we we'll qualify for the Super Season. Now, if you want to play Nigeria, then you have to buckle up very well. <laughs> and we are not doing it just like that. I'm just showing, I'm just dictating the pace for others that these young girls, they can really do well. We, we check the players that we are having. Just some of them are seen in secondary school. Some of them just pass out from secondary school. We can give this young guy. They have the future. Uh, today, I thank God what is happening at the Super Falcon. You see the likes of Abiodun. You see yeah, the, I remember. Abiodun actually yes. passed through you. Yes, yes. Deborah Abiodun passed yes, through you. Yes, in 2024, the COVID. Mm. And we have a moral too. They are all there. So then look at the people, I mean, this other people now graduating. So if we can make it, if only we can give them a chance, they have the future. They will stay longer in the game mm -hmm. from under 17, 20 down to Super Falcon. Look at how many years they're going to spend. So we need that. And that's what we're doing. What I did in Nigeria is what I transferred to the national team. It's a national duty. It's a national work. So we need to all work around and give these young ones chances. We're only developing. My own is about developing. Let's develop one. Let's go to the look and corners of Nigeria. Let's bring them out. They can play football. Mm. They can make it. So instead of them wasting away outside there, then they manage it with education. Very, very important. That is the key. They must manage. They must not leave a football. I mean, leave education for football. The two must go together. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Well, good one there. Why are you saying that you can't uh, uh, align footballers to marry with education? Coach uh, uh, Rafael Ahamba, your team reignited fusion so far. Uh, how are they performing? Uh, it's the glory of God. Uh, my, my boys are actually doing well, mm -hmm. and uh, we are even participating. We are, we are actually currently we are about to be crowned the champion of Abuja Kids Soccer League. A good one. Organized then. by former Super Eagles player Femi Ajilore. A good one there. Well, just to give you an update concerning uh, matches being played, Portugal really doing well against Vietnam. As at this time, they were leading 2 0. Good one for Portugal uh, right now. Well, well, right now, they are actually leading 2 0 there. Well, before we go, let's just give you some information before we wrap it up. That's an update. Uh, we're talking about basketball. The Tigers, as we speak right now, they are in Rwanda, Kigali for the Afro basket. Can they win it to make it four times in a row? It is possible. Uh, the ladies are there and they are fired up for this competition that will be starting, uh, that will be tomorrow. They'll be facing Congo, uh, DR Congo, in their fourth game, wishing them the best. And also, let's quickly look at some result of uh, preseason games. Manchester United lost against uh, Real Madrid by two goals to nil in that game. There, Cotsel uh, Bell, uh, Bellingham also scoring among the two 
goals there. Also, Newcastle against Chelsea. It was uh, it ended 1-1 in that game. Almiron and Jackson sharing this point for, the, for both uh, clubs. And you have Fulham uh, losing against Axton Villa by two goals to nil. Axton Villa showing their class. Philogene and Deabi scoring those goals. And before we wrap it up, let's look at some transfer stories. Genk wants Onuachu's return from Southampton. Southampton wants to uh, uh, Genk rather. They want to get their former player back and everything could go well and they get him back. And then we talk about Manchester United offer 60 million euros to Atalanta in verbal agreement for forward Rasmus hold on there. While PSG forward Kylian Mbappe is not interested in meeting Al Hilal representatives. They offer 300 million euros for him. But right now, Kylian Mbappe doesn't want to meet with them wants to stay or move to someone else. Well, we'll just give you an update there concerning those games and also those transfer news now. Well, for Coach Bankole, even though you don't predict games, from all your indication, they are going to draw, right? No, 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 not absolute draw. We are going for winning. Mm. I want Nigeria to coach me right. We are going for winning. Okay. But in the virtue of maybe God forbid, but in the scores, we must fight back to get the goal back. So mm. I'll be able to have draw. The worst, instead of losing, we should get a draw. But we are going for winning. I'm part of the winning. Because uh, if you don't win, it's not good for us. But if, adventure, you want to turn to lose, let's turn it to draw. Hmm. To make us seem more relevant at the tournament. Good one there. Then, Rafael Ahamba. Unamba, Rafael. Hmm. Um, I see us winning, like I said earlier on, 3-1. Because these guys are fired up. Seriously, I strongly, see, I strongly believe one. because had they been at the Bade presence was at the first match, mm. I see us beating Canada. Canada. Okay, well, from the way it is yeah. right now, Nigerians are beginning to look at this game critically. For Coach Bankole, he wants a win. No matter how it is, we should just go out there and win. And for Coach uh, Rafael, he also wants a win. And he's even saying it's going to be 3-1. We wait to see. Will it be 3-1? We leave it for Super Falcons. They are really fired up for this game. They drew against Canada and they need a win now. For Super Falcons out there from Nigeria, we are saying go out there and get a win. It is very possible. I'm Adini Ajishafe. I want to appreciate you guys for coming on the show. Thank you so much, thank Coach. You so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. And thank you so much. Uh, yes. Uh, once again, sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.